Hey guys, welcome Hello. to another podcast. Welcome to the Que Dicho podcast, the podcasting where we dive deep into the dicho that we grew up hearing from our parents and grandparents. I'm your host, Alejandro Luviano. And I'm Alondra Luviano, your other host. And in this episode, we're going to dive deep into the dicho. Quien con lobos anda a hallar se enseña. Also... <laughs> oh, una, una canción, una rola de los temerarios. Los temerarios. <laughs> uh, I no knew. te vayas. No te vayas. That's all I think about when I think If of temerarios. If you know that reference, you guys, that's so funny. Yeah, you're an OG. <laughs> in this episode, we're also going to be talking about our recent trip that we announced in our other episode, the VCon. And Woo-hoo. we're going to do a little summary of our experience going to VCon. It was amazing. It was awesome. And it was full of information. And we're just super stoked about it, you know. Also, in this episode, we're going to be sharing our life recently a little life update for you guys but we can talk about that a little bit more later on but first let's get into the nitty-gritty let's get to the nitty gritty gritty the nitty gritty <laughs> let's get into it let's dive deep all right let me read it again all right yeah forgot. go ahead and so quien con lobos anda a oyar se enseña do you want to give that english translation for the people in the back who speak only english those who hang out with wolves learn to howl to howl there you go yeah uh there's one of those words that's like it's in there but it's like not identified yeah like i've i've, I've known that it's howling mm-hmm. Aullar, in other words in, Sp- in spanish but yeah that's the english translation those who hang out with wolves will learn to howl Ow! oh yeah that's what <laughs> Ow! that hurt my ears All right. All right. Let's so go deep into this dicho. So that's your translation. I would agree that that's how I would translate it. The same right way. to our Chicanos that want so, a little bit more context, not just the Spanish yeah. version. Because again, let's remind our viewers, our Chicano uh, friends, fellows who are watching this. We are trying to uncover the dichos that we grew up hearing, but not necessarily know what they mean. So if you're in that boat with us where we did not understand the dichos that were told to us because we're removed from that culture, this is the podcast where we dive deep into the dichos so we can get a little bit more context and the definition and the translation so we can know whenever our family members tell us a dicho, we're like, hey, I know that dicho because I follow que dicho. Uh- <laughs> That was a good ad. So this dicho, the meaning goes to the people you hang out with or your friends or the the people you spend the most time with. What do you take from them and how that also influences you as a person? So it's a dicho that you would share or say to someone who you're trying to make them understand that those friends that you hang out with, you're going to end up doing what they do. That could go positive or negative if that's a good bunch of people then good things is what you're going to be learning but if those are like some hoodlums or some people hoodlums. Who... let's try not to be mean okay i don't want to cut things out is that mean calling people hoodlums hood rats how about that that's even worse <laughs> no hood rat shit you didn't do hood rat shit as a teenager i also think of main hoochies what you ever heard of the main hoochie you're like you're like my main hoochie uh-uh you got your hoochie mamas <laughs> what and then you're the main hoochie okay let's come back what i'm trying to say is like if you hang out with people that are doing bad things let's say they're rebelling they're doing negative things in the world out there and those are the bunch of people that you hang out with well some of those tendencies or some of those point of views their mindset their, their habits mindsets, exactly their, their lifestyle exactly will have major influence in you and you will be associated with that group as well. To come back to the dicho, you will learn their ways. So it's very important to keep an eye on who you hang out with. Yeah, choose your friends wisely, you guys. That's like the message of this dicho. Well, not not overall, but like that's one way you can you can see this message as like choose your friends wisely. That advice can be tricky because when I was growing up, I remember not really choosing my friends. Exactly. They're just a bunch of people that that were nearby and that's never that's the thing about growing up is that your friends are mostly the people who you spend the most time like proximity wise or because you spend some certain classes with them and you get mm-hmm. to know them that those are your friends 
because and like what they're like in your same school blah 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 like you don't really get to choose exactly who your friends are you get a certain amount of options they mm-hmm. got you do choose well that that's the thing you have to understand that you can choose some people would think that just because those are the people you you do have your options because i chose my friends but continuing on with your experience my perspective is like it's when you're young and you're a teenager you don't understand that you can choose the people you hang out with uh but what i think happens is like that's all you know the people that were presented to you at a certain time and that you started hanging out with them were the first that you knew and so you think that's the norm and then you kind of get caught up in this little loop of like okay so this is all i know so it's here this is where i stay but the advice or the thing to understand as well is that you can choose better ones if the the bunch of people are bad or if you happen to have a group of people and then only a group of them are good or or have positive or invoke positivity in the group you can choose to only hang out with them and then kind of like like cut the other people off. yeah cut the other people off well that's the thing about choosing your friends wisely it's the wisest choice you can make for yourself is having people around you surrounding you who care for you who care and respect you and are loyal to you as a friend and that's the type of people you want as an adult i guess that that's what is so different when it comes to choosing your friendships as an adult or as like a more mature person because once you you reach a certain maturity you'd start to realize like oh this person isn't really my friend oh this person's acting really weird i don't want to hang out with this person anymore because like as a kid you kind of feel the pressure to stay to fit in to stay in a friend group to not be isolated to have somebody to sit with at lunch you know okay, yeah but as an adult like none of those things matter anymore right so or then, should it matter as an adult you say that it should not matter like losing a friend because of fear of being without them okay okay because so you're comfortable you're I comfortable to, i have to break it down you're comfortable say it on one. <laughs> you, you got comfort in that friendship yeah i get you yeah it's it guys it's a tricky situation when it comes to friends and everybody will encounter different scenarios when it comes to friendships and creating friends and as an adult that's a whole another game that's when it gets really tricky or very complicated i f- <laughs> i feel like adult friendships are so much more can if you ever do make a friendship as an adult and like they hit all the boxes they value you they have empathy for you they care for you they have your back they trust you they're honest with you if they hit all of those boxes and you find an adult friendship like that i feel like that's worth so much more than just like a a childhood friend or like oh we're friends from way back then okay because it's more mature but i will say that from my perspective or my experience i never i i have i have really difficulty identifying those uh childhood friends because as a chicano or as a mexican-american the fact that i was removed from several places growing up i've never really formed those lifelong friendships that you build initially i think there's more people where or where they're born or where they grow up it's the same place wherever they they, they, stay. they live and they they get to stay in in this one area and then live out the life there like born in that and raised. environment born and raised like you were born here you went to school in the same elementary you went to school in the same middle school and then there's just a small amount of those people that maybe changed middle school or they were removed in my perspective i was removed from where we started right mexico which was mexico so i have memories of me building relationships with the schoolmates and the people in my street and then being removed from there so as a child it was like okay i guess i had those friends and now i'm in this new area and then it happened again and and yeah so usually it sh- it should have been fine just if like okay i i was moved here and then i have those friends and i built those but no my my family was just like no we're gonna do this differently and then i was removed again and never really formed those tight friendships from those years those mm-hmm. initial years also that's true for middle school that's true for high school as well and like it, it was just a whole up and down situation in in my childhood kid and then teenage years so me speaking about friendships it could be a little bit different like my perspective like you feel do you think that you were more so a lone wolf digamos yeah (laughs) 
Yeah, I think so. I think that's more of my perspective when it comes to friends. I did grow up to like you had friends. label certain individuals like friends, like yeah, but they were short lived type of thing mm. because uh no friendship lasted longer than like four years. Longer than that phase in your life, mm-hmm. digamos. Yeah. Now I have a very jaded perspective or experience of like friendship, right? Yeah. I just I just understand them as individuals that come in your life and you have some certain things in common during that moment, but then you either outgrow them or you just move. You move away. You move away. Yeah. yeah. And, and like, then it just ends there. Like And for me and it's that- been so easy just to be like, Oh, well, I just move away and like I have no nothing in common with them, so that's it. Se acabo ahí. Mm-hmm. But and I think I s I've seen it where like people keep in touch. Even though they <laughs> moved away, they're still friends. I'm just like, What? Oh, so that's allowed too and i just didn't know i thought that's like whenever you moved okay that's no that's what i'm saying as an adult friendship you're uh-huh. more mature in that way because i don't think you've made an adult friendship i see yet yet because what has it been it's been our challenge for us because we look at each other's perspective of our lives and we're like many we friends we say that like because we do everything together me and alejandro are we're homies we do hood rat shit <laughs> we're a couple we're married we're best friends we're everything but we don't have a group of friends that are ours like we have we have friends and we do stuff with them i can count them in like two fingers <laughs> <laughs> exactly it's because it's hard because we're so i don't know if it's we're weird i think so because even <laughs> when we know. had just started dating people just identified us as oh they're both weird they're gonna end up together maybe maybe i think and that's, it, what that's how it happened <laughs> right i think i think that's what happened it's like you know who look who would make a good couple those two right there look at them they're meant for each other and stuff look at them oh yeah look at them all they would say that a lot but that's not a reason why we can't make friends it's just we, we're like putting our head down like if you want to see it that way like we have our head down working on our own goals that we're not really focusing on spending time with people like that yet from what i i said earlier about my childhood and then plus reading in books that the major five people that you spend time with pour major influence in your life mm-hmm. aka el que con lobo se junta aprende a was also kind of like tattooed on my brain when i read those early on whenever i started doing you were the like what, personal 17, development 18? right and i was like oh okay so if i don't want certain things to be superimposed on me because of the people i hang out with i need to be very guarded on who i let in and you had to make that choice to be like you know what this is where it ends with us because i don't agree with what you guys are doing anymore right. like it, you do you at this point but i can't stay is that how you were yeah it was very much like i'm trying to do this stuff and i see that y'all already decided what y'all want to do and what you value in life or at least in that stage in that of, stage in, in that moment and i'm like i'm not gonna put myself in that situation because i know i don't want to even be associated with that environment so that cost the lone wolf mentality type of thing which you kind of already had though which exactly like which i was already kind of accustomed my only true homies my true people that were there that i deem very valuable in my life is my family so Mm -hmm. my siblings my sister my brother and then the other cousins that came in into my life and they were they started being more part of my life Okay. Which, which that's what I hold as very high valuable. But to have someone who came from the outside that I met, there's only been a few that have been I only able have one. to. <laughs> Actually, I mean, one. And yeah. like, if I'm considering this next one, that's like, because you build those whenever you have something so in common that you feel like I want to hang out more with this person. I want to talk to this person even more. I mm-hmm. want to You're exchange to continue. In ideas because they have the same mindset and their goals are very aligned with your goals. And you're on the same path. That's something that... Path meaning like same direction? Yeah, like that's like you said, the same mindset, the same goals. Which is where the dicho comes in. Quien con lobos anda a oyar se enseña. This dicho I chose in specific for this week because we had gone to a convention we mentioned it on our recent podcast that we were going to vcon and so we are back and i feel like that was the perfect dicho for this week because of everything that we learned we experienced and we shared with the people 
in VCon this weekend. Yeah, and it's it's that scenario where like where you put yourself in or the the environment that you are in will pour major influence in what you do and what you're focused on. For us, VCon became or has become this thing where we really do appreciate the like-minded individuals that show up to this convention and the quality of individuals that show oh, up yeah. is it's very top tier type of thing the mere fact that we are in at vcon is because you had to be very very aware and you had to had your values very identified before even considering or, or being in that position where you could could have bought one of the v friends from gary v and then being there whenever he announced that it was going to be tickets for a vcon and you had to be very involved in that niche specific area which is considered a bit cutting edge technology or mm -hmm. cutting edge um, information and the way to do business and everybody that shows up there are very top tier do you have anything you want to share about that Alo? well last year we had gone for the first time and you're like an original v holder whatever that um, apparently that's like a, a pokemon type of thing <laughs> It's such a boy thing. I right. don't know. Nerdies. The point is that this year we went again and we had road trip there. Mm -hmm. And that was a whole... Oh, my God. Crazy. Let me just say... Okay, so we're let me just tell you guys what happened. All right, story time, quick. guys. So we were already... We already planned to road trip there. Because we're like, what's 13 hours? Like, that'll be fun. Whatever. Right. You know, I've gone to road trips all the time. It's doable. So we had planned to leave on Thursday because VCon is three days. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, whatever. But apparently the fuck not because Wednesday morning we woke up Alejandro woke up before me and he was just checking he's like he saw an anuncio an announcement on the app and he, it was saying see you tomorrow right yeah, yeah and yeah. then Alejandro's like but we're leaving tomorrow yeah we how does that already, make we sense had, yeah we had planned that we we're gonna leave on on Thursday yeah we had nothing ready nothing ready uh -uh. only by luck we went to buy some snacks the day before and so we had to put two and two together and realize that they had moved not that they had moved but they had already planned VCon Thursday Friday Saturday and it's been a known thing for the whole time it's been there it's right been in front of our faces in front of our faces announcement after announcement and he tried to blame me what? i tried to blame him what would you call that what would you call that like like i said it's stupidity is it okay i'm just gonna say i will admit we were very busy that week this past last week we were very so distracted busy. well not just we had a lot of work to do we were editing videos we were filming in fact we filmed the last video the night before where we should have been asleep already because we were supposed to leave 5 a.m which we mm -hmm. didn't so we left at 12 p.m on a wednesday knowing it would take us 13 hours to get there so so we messed up big time it was definitely dropping the ball and and like because we had time to prepare but just the important part was to get the date right but okay the only reason i wasn't so upset is because imagine had we left thursday morning at 5 a.m that would have been worse that would have been worse i would have been crying i'd have been upset would have been upset because we would have missed, missed half the day we would have missed the events on, on thursday. thursday so good thing i caught it early so that it was early enough so that like around 12 p.m we were we, heading out. we were already heading over there we have to drop everything was, we had planned for that man. day and we just had to make our maletas and we were like well this is a reality we yeah just have to it face did not it. feel right though and leaving everything half done like the work i cleaned the the room so fast i made sure <laughs> everything was ready for the kitties to be alone we just said bye and we yeah, left that was an experience and that was something that i would take forever as a lesson learned right i know i just can't believe how many times how it was it passes like, I, like you don't consider it i felt like patrick star in that scene you guys you know when gary gets lost and patrick goes to the grocery store and he's just chilling and he sees gary on the side he's like hey gary and then he just leaves and then cut to the next scene spongebob's still crying and then patrick's like whatever consult helping spongebob right that's like, how i felt oh because my God. I had read so many posts about VCon. We've been keeping up that entire week of like the update. Because they had the uh, the countdown and everything. Uh -huh. And the, the reason I say I felt like Patrick, because on Sunday, the countdown was like four more days till VCon. And in my head, like subconsciously, I was like, I read it, but... I was like, four more days. VCon isn't until Friday. That's five right. days. I didn't put two and two together. Right. You didn't sit down to actually see the calendar and see that, oh, it's Thursday. That means we have to be traveling on Wednesday. We had a preconceived idea of thinking of the first event was going to be friday because that's that how it was last we year we had thursday to travel and we just stuck 
to that one. Yeah. And so that means that we had to leave Wednesday at 5 a.m., which we did not. Oh, my God. All right. Lesson is make sure to really get the dates. If you have an event, pay attention to the dates. Please. We didn't. So, oh, my God. We had to react real quickly on that. We reacted quick enough. And then we got there at 1 a.m. in the morning. 2 a.m. 2 a.m. Because the time changed. So it wasn't that bad. It was fun overall. Love the experience. Love the people. Love what we learned. And here we are. Yeah. Vcon, it's his own experience that maybe, I mean, we can we can talk about more about it. But that's oh, for some other we'll be day. later. For now, yeah, we went to Vcon. And like the way that we want to connect this to the Detroit is that those are a bunch of individuals that are very high quality and who have at least a lot of their goals set or their interests are very aligned with us so with those individuals is someone who i feel comfortable being associated with yeah so friendships are important in life i don't have any <laughs> you don't have any i don't even <laughs> i like okay let me just bring important. it back to your in your since for you you said you grew up and you were kind of like the lone wolf you mm-hmm. would jump from here to there and you had no choice but to let go of your friends because of moving and blah 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 but in the way that you described it that other people born and raised in certain places and they have all their years where they get like friendships and they start to grow through like elementary school blah 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 that was me I started school here in Texas in kindergarten. So ever since then, I do have some certain people that I remember in kindergarten through high school. Okay. Yeah, they weren't my friends, but I I knew their faces. I knew their names. I remember. And there's this one boy. I told you the story before. (laughs) There's this one boy that was in my kindergarten class. And I remember. And the time I peed in my chair, like I peed on my, in my, in my classroom chair. Little Alondra you. Little me not knowing any English. And I, I needed to go to the bathroom. I don't know why. I didn't go apart from being scared as hell uh-huh. not knowing the language or or I, I did and that's the classroom bathroom was you being used mm-hmm. and so I had I mean you're what five years old so I, right you're a kid you're like I was a little, little and I wasn't the only one who had accidents oh, okay. but I did end up peeing my pants and this boy <laughs> came over can you picture the kindergarten chairs yeah, yeah like they're teeny tiny they're, they're, yeah they're little ones. they're uh-huh. little so he like bends over on the floor and he's like this girl's chair is leaking <laughs> <laughs> so that's whenever like the teacher came and like oh snap girl you just peed your pants <laughs> and that boy i remember him from elementary from my kindergarten class we went to the same elementary schools middle schools and high schools and he had that knowledge of like that's the girl that peed i don't know if he remembered <laughs> I remembered, obviously. Oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah, you can remember all those little stories and little happenings. Yeah, especially, so that's unfortunate. Especially something like that. Especially. I hope he didn't remember. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. I haven't yeah. seen him since high school, so it don't matter, really. But it's just a funny story mm-hmm. that in your, in your case, like, yeah, that's, that's what happens in small towns. When you keep up with those individuals, right? Well, I didn't keep up with them. It was just like we had the same schools okay. from elementary. Because there's some people I had the same schools, but I didn't have the same classroom. Yeah, so... So, el que con lobos anda, aprende a huyar. It's a dicho that you say to someone who needs to understand that what the people you hang out with will influence you a lot. Or you will reflect. You will reflect? Oh, okay, yeah, because if they're doing it, you're doing it. So, it's a lot of the dicho is rooted in the idea that what they do, you will do. And, and you have no control on what they do. But you do have control on who you choose to spend with. But you're already hanging out with them. So this is a detail for those individuals that already has a group, a group of friends, let's say. And they are known for being a certain way. Well, that thing that they do, well, you might not agree on that stuff. And you might be like a little bit like, no, I don't partake. But you're hanging out with them. But you're going to have FOMO. You'll be like, nah, let's go. What is the thing where people, like when they're doing something and they tell you, hey, come on, do it. Pressure? Do it. Peer pressure? Peer pressure. There you go. That is the key. The the hidden message that is trying to reveal to people. Peer pressure is the thing that is warning us on this dicho. For me, I feel like if you get peer pressure, those aren't friends in the first place. So, yes, I agree. But I'm also adding on to that. Like if you're getting peer pressured from your friends to do things that you don't want to do or that they're crossing your boundaries or your limitations, those are not friends. Because a real friend will understand 
your limitations whether it's like oh you don't drink or oh you have school tomorrow you gotta go study like it doesn't even have to be bad things you know but because that's what i wasn't gonna touch on i'm like what if the thing that they're trying your to encourage you is, is something that will help you well then that that is a good friend because they're pushing you and they want you to do things to make you a better version of who you are right so then the- but then it comes but they do still care for you and they understand your limitations i think you're taking it too seriously what friendship yes i do no, take no, it seriously but, but like as kids you think kids no i'm talking about an, uh, I'm adults then yeah so you you're saying this in the perspective of right now yes like the way you understand it yes because when i was a kid i didn't even know what peer pressure was or well i knew it what peer pressure was because i would tell them I was like i don't give in to peer pressure Anytime they would say anything that I didn't want to do. But that was high school, right? That was already high school. Okay. Yeah. okay. No, I was I was pretty dumb in high school. So <laughs> no, I was peer pressure to everything, I guess. But then again, that just goes to show what kind of friends you had. Because my friends were similar to me in that sense that they weren't really doing anything to pressure you into fitting in with them. I feel like I had a really chill out, relaxed group. It's because peer pressure is either a very strong sword that is used or a very silent one. Because peer pressure could just be the simple fact that they're doing it and you're kind of like unspokenly you're like oh, okay yeah i'll do it hmm. or it could be that like i said that strong action is like come on dude you don't want to do it you don't want to be cool like ¿Qué us? Drogas? Es cocaína. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah. cocaína? it could be to that extent right because that that's peer pressure but that's like see and those are not your friends dude those are those are not friends those are people who would want you to be like them i don't know but for me i've always felt so um do you feel uncomfortable whenever there's peer pressure applied well i haven't been peer pressured in a long time like i said like whenever people did try to be like hey like i say we were at a house party Mm -hmm. like hey take a shot with me i'm like no i don't give into peer pressure like if it doesn't come from my own thoughts mm-hmm. and my own actions i'm not gonna do it and they respect eventually they respected it your friends your group of friends yeah they were quick to you know like oh yeah she doesn't drink but i mean eventually that mindset is what kind of made us go through our own paths but you did do certain things that you just because you hang out with them you were to normally do but in they're high doing school it. i was interested like here's an example of real life real life example mm-hmm. i was interested in cosmetology and like the idea of all that like getting your license in high school that you had the opportunity to get your license in high school while taking the classes or whatever but i didn't do it because i wanted to spend my art class with my friends which i'm not friends with them anymore so it's a type of influence that they did kind of like peer no i wasn't to, pressured but it was kind of like oh which one are you taking yeah let's take it together you know exactly that's already a suggestion that's that's mm-hmm. influencing it was influence it wasn't this dicho is not so much of peer pressure it's more of like being influenced as in like because they were doing certain things you are more inclined on doing those things because number one it's not bad it, it doesn't mean it doesn't it's mean bad. it's bad yeah right it's just something that they're doing so you're like oh they're my friends i'm comfortable with them and i want to hang out with them more so i'm gonna do this that's gonna yeah that's always gonna be like your first option oh like the comfort zone being with my friends versus going out there and getting my license with some kids that i didn't know from other schools okay but yeah that's one example from high school i guess right there's a powerful influence of the people you choose to hang out with right who you choose as your company can guide you through the right path or the wrong path and for you you've had that example where you had to choose the road less traveled digamos and just go on your own because you knew that maybe this friend group wasn't really didn't have their your best interest anymore yeah it was someone like that i feel like it was more they had just no direction there were certain behaviors that i saw that like if those continued that's where most likely i'm gonna end up in a situation where like i don't want to you never considered staying but just doing your own thing but still being their friends what did that cost you too much it's because it was very 180 direction wise just the simple fact that i needed to focus my time on things that mattered education wise Mm -hmm. meaning that if i wanted good grades you had to stay home i had to go to the library exactly i had to be physically in other places mm-hmm. remove myself from where i was hanging out before and be in different places that they weren't on that path so they wouldn't be like yeah let's go hang out over there oh no 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 this is not hang out this is 
studying this is reading this is trying this is what we re- where, where i remember we're like oh this is boring let's do something else memory started coming oh, out really? i said like no 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 it's not boring it's important but because i would hang out with y'all i would kind of be like yeah you know what whatever school's not important school's for chumps <laughs> that old saying says that? i don't i don't even know oh my god is it <laughs> a meme what, no say it's like a movie line some oh, lame okay, thing okay. school's for chumps like bro yeah and the other thing is like i started reading those personal development books which recommended certain behaviors and especially books that would say you need to start quitting things that take away from you yes like alcohol mm alcohol taxes you majorly like in your body mentally physically spiritually and there's many aspects of like it's just with other individuals who drink that's another thing it's like environment wise it's like who are you hanging out with those people could be dangerous whenever they're under the influence of alcohol and you can wind up being in a fight and then i mean things can get out of hand when you're under the influence things could go to chaos really quickly and to top it off we weren't of age <laughs> Ooh. right and that's when it's like yeah that's dangerous that is messing with your future if you're doing that that's that's tapping with with like you're playing with fire so it's not point. really being responsible exactly all of those things no. and like, like topping it off yeah you might feel you're old enough but like legally uh-uh you i don't know caught. i've never really like cared to get to party to get drunk you know it's never someone been. would say boo you weren't hanging out with the wolves so you never learned to how <laughs> right no it, it's just been an active choice that i've never really wanted to partake in right because, and some people sorry because that mindset was because of the wolves you were hanging out with yeah which was your family yeah right exactly because it was a generational thing where luckily both my parents agreed not to continue that they did cut it there and so that influenced my sister and i to you know it was the norm for y'all it was the norm for us and instead of putting those or showing those habits and that lifestyle to us growing up they taught us about like the importance of going to school of being responsible mannered you know Mm -hmm. they were instilling different values into us raising us versus people who had just focused versus parents who were just focusing on the weekend drinking going out um letting their kids do whatever they want you know because we had rules my parents were strict for us growing was up it, was it your mom or your dad it was both of them both of them yeah okay okay good good <laughs> yeah no yeah because if yeah, one person overpowers you, uh, yeah it yeah, has a, to be it's a team exactly you said it perfectly it, yes it's a team and so all of that had the way that my parents raised me influenced the friendships that i chose to have in middle school to high school because i did grow up and i did have my little friend group from middle school all the way to like early college and like that was just mainly because of i guess proximity like oh these are the fr- the kids that i see every day mm-hmm. i'm gonna make, be friends with them and that's just how it happened right yeah but obviously life happens and you have to choose for yourself eventually and that's why i only have one friend <laughs> <laughs> from that bunch from that bunch yeah one friend who we just like chose to continue that friendship because it's not easy to hang out with this person all the time but we put that importance into our friendship mm-hmm. and we still feed it because we value it yeah care for each other yeah yeah <laughs> no I'm, I'm not going to it just hurts that. oh okay this is the moment where we can go deeper and try to uncover the things that are not easy to access from this teacher. Okay, so... It's like that deep knowledge that we need to at least look over the... The obvious? The obvious. The, that point, guys. Right, you ready to channel it? Hmm. El que con lobos anda... Oyar se enseña. Ow! Ow! What does a how mean for them? For lobos. It's a natural thing. <laughs> Let me look it up. I'm not too sure. It's like part of their identity. It's what they do. It's their essence of woes to howl at the moon. Okay, this is what Google says. Ready? Howling may be heard at night, but it is not a behavior directed to the moon. Instead, it is used as a social rally call, a hail to hunt, or as a territorial expression. Did you know that individuals have different howls that can be heard by other wolves six to seven miles away? A howl can even help a lost wolf 
find its way home. So Very interesting. A social rally call, a hail to hunt, or as a territorial expression. It's just their language, I guess. Can mean many things. Like monkeys climb. Like cats meow. Oh, okay, Like Alejandro okay. sneezes a lot. Okay. <laughs> so so it's, it's something what identifies natural, yeah. the group. Mm-hmm. something identifies it could be good or bad exactly so it's their nature and you want to be howling go hang with the wolves you want to be skipping class go hang with the there's kids. a group that are identified exactly by that. you want good grades there's a group of individuals that value that you want to learn about nfts those. go to vcon <laughs> <laughs> right oh last year you want to learn about um drawing and painting go to unt for drawing and painting specifically and major and in, major in it yeah right so but identify specific. it identify what you want identify what you want and go after it or if not identify what you don't want and avoid it wow say that again for the people in the say, back who didn't hear that i forgot what i said <laughs> <laughs> it's so the what, drugs so ad. what you said <laughs> just kidding i'm not on drugs so what you said is it's in identifying what you want so that you can go hang out or be around the people who are into that thing that you've identified or identifying what you don't want so that you can avoid those individuals beautiful write that down tattoo it we just hit a break point in this dicho i think we've gotten to a point where like it's it's there it's valuable nice we got into the nitty-gritty the nitty-gritty has been revealed the Ooh. Deep, we dived <gasps> deep into the just detail. like split it apart <laughs> right uncovered no munches i'm just kidding Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yes guys so this is what we've been able to uncover from this detail. i really do hope that this is something that you value and that you find value in this podcast for the quien con lobos anda aullar se enseña yes if you've reached this point make sure to follow and like Please the video share us as well also Comment down below if this dicho really does call out to you and it has made you reflect on identifying that thing that you want to pursue, which means when you identify that thing, you can seek those individuals who you want to be like or avoid the individuals that you've identified the things that you don't want to do. Comment down below. We would love to read them in our next video. <laughs> All right, VCon. You want to get a little bit what what was your experience in VCon? Um, I had so much fun this time around comparing it to last year because last year I had no clue what to expect. And it was more so like involved with the NFT world and like OpenSea and all of that um, technical talk. Yeah, it's because last year it was more about the freshness of being a convention that was started out of NFTs. So it was so- revolving nfts yeah because it, it was probably gary v did something i think no one had really done with nfts which yeah. was make his nft his collection ticket. make it into this event thing that could happen yeah i think really other cool. people have done it before but th- that last year was the first time that they did it or he did it in a big bigger scale and so what this year was was a little bit with that out of the way right the, the like we had already acknowledged that right yeah, last year acknowledged that it was like it. this is an nft you bought it congratulations yeah. here we are again so now but how this year how do we grow from this point on how do we by knowing that from last year right and so what i really loved about this year is that they had more like business stuff in general last year was more like an nft conference mm-hmm. this year was more so like a, a a business conference but it was a modern and cool and fun and unique business conference it was not your average like tuxedo mm-hmm. and suitcase men only business conference you know it was with the preconceived information or preconceived knowledge of that it was r- connected with nfts so it's like where do you take this with your business like you still need marketing for your business you still need but it's like so it's so cool because they're teaching you and giving you these tips on how to market your business how to create content for your business how important content is for your business in this new world of of social media of the internet of ai 
And it's just like, write that down, write that down, you know? Yeah, it was such good information. And it's also good that the individuals who are showing up to speak at this conference were individuals who are at the cutting edge of this technology or yeah. business, how business is being done right now, or that they're doing something different and modern. Because there was a lot of celebrities there, and some of them, like Jessica Alba and uh, what's her name, the one from Adam Sandler? I forgot. Her I name forgot too. Her name. the lady from 50 first dates all right her different talks or whatever but they were one of the people there and they were mentioning about their business like in the specific jessica alba i like that she wasn't partnering with like target or whatever you know no it, it was, was her she started business. a business yeah she, and started she was business. the face of it she's the owner she's the ceo she was the speaker of it she had her mission and she had a mission and it was just so much more it, it felt so refreshing to hear a celebrity or just anybody in general just talking about how important their health health is and how they how they care what they put into the environment and what they put into people's households caring for the environment and caring for yeah. people's health it doesn't it doesn't sound like big pharma or corporate america businesses it right. just sounded so much more real and that's what i see vcon as a lot of the speakers were they're just so real like even the motivational speakers you know right yeah yeah yeah. and just to inspire you to to come back because because the thing one of the things that they did say on the uh on vcon or several speakers would say and it was a known thing it was a very common theme in all of the speakers is that the high it's all good and and you're all your your morale and your motivation is very high there at vcon but come monday mm -hmm. you're gonna go back to your usual routine your reality right so what they were invoking or what they would trying to get the message out was that you need to be inspired to go back on monday and get the things that you learned and use them. So a lot of the information or a lot of the knowledge that they were giving the people there at VCon, us, was things that we can come back and implement in our own business, in our own lives. And it was encouraged and it was seen that, that like, yes, it's all great to make the connections and have the people that you're going to meet at VCon. But also when you go back to your life, That's where it matters. Exactly. And I like that they were putting emphasis on that. Emphasis on that. It's your reality. It's your mission. It's your focus. It's your goals that you need to be looking for. Because they are the, just there to give you the inspiration. To give you some tools that you can use on your journey. Mm -hmm. And that's what I like about the speakers. As well as the individuals there. Yeah. Where in that similar mindset. A lot of them are in a journey. Where they're creating something. It's not just to get information. They're creating a business. They're creating content. They're, they're creating a podcast. Yeah. There, there's a <laughs> lot of like minded individuals like us. Which were like. We're a podcaster too. And we have a mission. And it just means that. For from us to y'all seeing this podcast is that we came back way better than we went to vcon and better versions of ourselves also means that we're better versions for y'all to to give this, this message of the Kedicho brand the Kedicho podcast so we can share with y'all amen <laughs> yeah so better us better content better pizza papa, papa john's, john's. <laughs> 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 All right, and then after VCon, I, we road trip oh back. My God, hold on, I want to, I want to do, I want to put this in here because I want to talk about it specifically of this. Okay, I was under the reality where I have never really been to a concert, oh and I've never experienced God. a performance of a of of a like artist. a live artist, uh -huh, like a live artist. I've seen glimpses of them, but when I tell you that. We probably had one of the best performance artists ever and that he was like literally like two feet away from us right there <laughs> viewing. We had like the perfect view also in, in the We were front experience. and center. This performer's Definitely. name is Busta Rhymes. Maybe you guys have heard of him? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I think so. <laughs> I think so. I think you know who oh, Busta okay. Rhymes is. Hopefully. Okay. His performance at the end of the day of day one of Beacon. That was like. It was. Oh, what? What did we even but, get ourselves in? 
in we the- were front and center you guys no earplugs no care in the world just like vibing going deaf it was crazy it was crazy it was amazing it was am- i liked it yes it was loud but it was also just like the the vibrations of the music nah, that it was using. amazing he's very talented no auto tune at all what you, and they said it themselves what you hear on the cds what you hear on the radio it's who he is and it's true yeah they are the special effect that's what he said yeah and i was oh my god yeah he's good it's like i knew who he was before but seeing him perform live just changed my perspective of yeah because like, like we've seen other performers we saw miguel last year okay, and like a yeah. few other ones but it didn't have that same passion that they right. had oh my uh-huh. god like they they get, they put their whole bussy into that his old Busta Rhyme bussy into right. that oh show. It was amazing. Ten out of ten. Yeah. So he he Taylor did... Swift could never. Oh, uh, we don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Not at all. Uh, RBD never... could never. <laughs> I don't know. Oh no. Like I said, we haven't been to other. Uh, yeah. This is just we're just biased, you know. Since yeah, those are but, only concerts. But but the combination of Busta Rhymes, his partner, and then the DJ just working together, they did like a magic show. They, pretty they much. They had like champagne just like pouring it out to people to drink apart from just like spraying it on people yeah i mean that wasn't the best part of that it was but fun. it was just one of the things that's that like crazy. oh we're, we weren't even ready for that one of the things i noticed about the beacon this year was that a lot of the original holders didn't go so what they ended up doing they was that sold they them. sold their tickets they sold not not the nft but it's w- with the nft you get the ticket to beacon so and you can they sell didn't it end up to, going again because they had expected it to just be nfts again i guess yeah i don't know i would assume i would assume yeah or or maybe i don't know maybe they were like nah we went one year and like i don't know but yeah that's interesting because majority of people that we did meet it was their first year and they had yeah. just bought a ticket mm-hmm. they didn't buy an nft so what we did see were a lot of the tiktok oh yeah influencer that was guys, weird. popular influencers like we saw dog face the chupapi muñeño kid yeah or guy. i don't know he's probably my age or whatever, i don't even know but, but we saw him and his girl there were uh, some like, makeup influencers there yeah. and i couldn't recognize them in person but because i went to like the hashtags of econ i did see that they posted and they're verified and they're huge in the makeup world and in, in okay, that world okay. so i was like yeah. oh that's really cool and there was like fashion nova influencer girls the only yeah. reason i know this is because i got on the hashtag yeah but yeah that, that's really interesting that people right. of different backgrounds were interested in going to mm-hmm. vcon this year yeah compared to last year yeah last year was all the n- the nerds you i know, call the, them the nerds okay right, the it was original so, holders the people who had to so, be there it felt so like tech talk geeky uh-huh. and i was just like zoning out half the time i was like <laughs> i'm hungry yeah, yeah but this this time was a bit different in that aspect and so much that like you got recognized or something like that <laughs> this girl walks up to you us guys and like, you got recognized oh at vcon right, imagine uh, that no we we're mistaken we we're, yeah. were like recognized but they no. thought we we're this they other couple they were this acapella couple on tiktok right i, I didn't even I look even, into yeah. it no but she followed us but then she was like no but you look so familiar said the, the, the girl oh, yeah and alondra was like damn well, and i was just like well you she does have a viral I was like video scratching my head I'm like <laughs> well my video went viral and then she's like which one i was like the dress one she's like wait and i i showed her the video she's like i saw you that's you that's, she was like yeah she was like laughing with me yeah they, they know, had a, they had like a weird little moment while i was like yeah it was a good time it was fun yeah it was a good time so uh, apart from like the the popular tiktokers that were there and the speakers there's the other part where like the people you meet there like the people that are are in your level or in a similar path with you we met several of them one of the first ones actually the first one that uh he he came up to us and asked us for a little interview because it was his first vcon his name is Haido, and he runs a la media business where he has a podcast it's called small guy in main street yeah and he interviews small businesses it was a pleasure meeting him and like we connected real well definitely is someone who i'm gonna stay in touch with because we went deep in conversation and we and then there was me eating pizza zoning out (laughs) (laughs) no yeah he he was pretty cool and like i i really do want to stay in touch with him because he's doing a podcast as well and he's on a similar journey as me and like it's he's a type someone of, he's a type of wolf you want to hang out with it's the type of wolf i want to continue hanging <laughs> out because i want to howl with him <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, someone I see myself building a relationship with, uh, definitely. And also kind of like accountability as well, because we are also both barely starting as like with Kedicho is barely starting. And it's someone so is who his. if if we if we rise up, I am bringing him with me. And if he rise up, I'm going to stay in contact with him. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's someone who I want to keep in touch and also the other individuals that I communicated mm -hmm. with and gave us a lot of a lot of good nuggets of information that was vcon guys and then we came back and like the ride was just long <laughs> yeah my feet got so swollen oh uh God. i don't know if it's like that or something but girl my feet were swollen the, the day we got back my toes i couldn't curl them they were so swollen I don't, did that happen to you no i don't think so i don't think it was that bad because i mean i was driving the entire time <laughs> and sorry Alejandro. yeah hey por lo menos no dejé solo that's a little bit true a little bit yeah you, I, oh, I remember wait. you took a nap i did take a nap so yeah but i was able to handle it and the thing is that here in texas you know like when you go to austin or you go anywhere you know, outside houston, of your town uh, yeah it's it's, it's like long an hour. hours right so i've done denton to houston and to austin it's like what about like four hours five hours so i felt like i had a good handle on that right i thought the road trip was gonna be good but whenever we were driving and we hit like that five hour mark that's when it started getting heavy when your it was butt got numb whenever <laughs> my back no my back was hurting i didn't know the trick of like you need to put something behind your back or like a cushion behind your back that way like it's like if you're standing straight while you're driving yeah i didn't know that trick so i was like really getting the form of the seat and i was like curling like that and like by hour <laughs> 10 my shoulders were killing me and i was just by like hour so 10, uncomfortable you were the hunchback of notre dame i wasn't prepared but now i know now you know for next tricks. time yeah for long trips now the other thing we wanted to share with y'all when we got back we got back to business right but then yes, alo had sir. this little thing that she had already scheduled in before we i had it scheduled for like a month i think but I, like i don't even know how to say it like do i just huh? say what it is well the major thing that alo had she had a surgery and yeah at this current moment she's healing from the surgery yeah that's why and I, I, I couldn't laugh hard <laughs> you didn't hear me like bending backwards or laughing yeah so alondra is going through the stage of like healing that's why it took us a while to make this podcast this week but anyways here we are doing the podcast and alondra Yay! showed up because she is in because <laughs> we were supposed uh, to film recovery. yesterday but or before the that. drug oh, yeah. said no alo is here with us uh and i'm glad that she was able to do this podcast even if she is in pain not, not so bad anymore but not um, so bad i did tell her que se tomara una de sus medicinas. oh no and and she said no 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 they they might take away the pain but they they have they, they have, have like some side ugly effect. side effect yeah. shit makes me go crazy <laughs> Yeah, she was telling me that, like, if I would make, like, little tiny noises, she could Tiniest. hear that. I, it she makes like, my ears loud. hurt. I'm like, what are you... It could be some medicine, but, like, I guess. I oh, my know. gosh. I was going to say, like, even the, the sound of my own voice in my ears would hurt so bad that I had to whisper to Alejandro to speak. Yeah, and and you're like, like I can't you hear you. What is it? Oh, it's because it hurts to It hurt speak. to talk. And I was like... And I, I thought it was just, like, me being weird, but it happened twice. So I was like, no, this is the medication. So I'm not taking it yeah. anymore. So she's going through the pain instead of getting the medication to I'm not feel the pain it. <laughs> right <laughs> all right guys so thank you for being here at the que dicho podcast thank you so much for sticking through this episode this is all for this episode where we dive deep into the dicho quien con lobos anda a hoyar se enseña thank you very much and we'll see you in the next episode Bye. goodbye love you